Ooh, baby, we're back. How we doing, YouTube Nation? We're gonna put more fish in the boat. Glorious January day. Um, overcast, temperatures roughly around 40 degrees straight up, so we got the Wind Rider stuff on, keeping me warm. So check them out. But uh, we're gonna put big fish in the boat. Tons of fish today. I'm debating whether I should keep fish or not. If I keep fish, we're going all the way to the uh, the table, baby. We're gonna bring them to the table if I keep them, obviously. I'm gonna bring in, show you how we fillet the fish and give you some of the, show you what we got. But right now we're, we're just chilling right here, guys. A little struggling with this crappie break right here. Do you guys have this issue? I don't like how that thing strips on there. It's kind of driving me nuts a little bit. And we gotta get ready for tournament season. I don't like going into tournament season with that. So I know that PTG's got a bracket they might have me try out. So hopefully they get one of those going here soon because I can tell you right now, it's frustrating that those things keep twisting like that. So that's a little feedback on them. Otherwise you gotta have some type of braking system. So no doubt about it. All right, let's do it. So yeah, uh, looking forward to 2024. Uh, the Crappie Masters, we will start off in Darbone. So if you guys like to come down there and uh, see an awesome event, that I expect that to be an extremely big event on Darbone the later part of February. All of our sponsors are back for 2024. The Original Fish Formula, Cornfield Fishing Gear, PTG, Sniping Braid, Hog Fishing, um, obviously, my own brand, Three Pound Fishing, and the rods and all that great stuff. You guys also need to check out my uh, fishing partner, Mike Geiger. He came out with the new uh, Slab Jacker, for, and they're uh, got an agreement with Brush Pile Jigs. You guys need to check that out for sure. Um, you'll see a lot of that probably on the tour, uh, the trail as well in those episodes. So yeah, we're just getting out here. It's the morning. We got water temperature. It looks like roughly around 40 degrees. It should come up here quite a bit, actually. Probably more so than 40. So our outside temperature is roughly around 35. Um, yeah, so I've been experiencing that trouble with crappie breaks. If you guys have a solution, let me know. It just seems like that one bracket continues slips around the power pole. Um, and so I'd love to have a solution. Something I can slip in there maybe to tighten it up a bit. There's our first cast there. Let's see if we got any takers early in the morning. Well, not early, but you know, we definitely have a crazy one coming here. You can barely see his body. Boom. First cast of the day. And now we have to make a decision on whether or not we're gonna keep fish or not. Oh, what do we wanna do, guys? Solid eater, I don't think we're gonna keep fish. I just don't think we're gonna do it. But that's a great starting fish aggressive fish that gives really hope that's the first cast of the day one fish in the bucket say something about i have a question that's always asked how do you find crappie on a lake that you don't know so in the tournament trail we went to a lot of tournaments um the lakes that we didn't know and the number one thing we do just to get this out there early in this video is that we look for creek channels um creek channels creek channels creek channels we look for coves that are got a lot of action in terms of a creek channel movement curves that type of thing that's probably the number one thing and from there we kind of start from the back of a cove and we go out and usually if you know you find out what goes on in that one first cove and then that kind of kind of dictates what you're going to do on the next cove um, but we're always looking for creek channels that's our number one thing that we always look we're going to a topographical map of the lake we always grab that my, my partner's good about getting a map for the lake and uh, we're reading the dips and but mostly the uh, the creek channels. so that's my recommendation in regards to that now check this out here this is a great school fish right here. Uh, we've been, I've been watching it while I've been talking. Look at that. And we're gonna cast into that right now. Now this is uh, part of that 132nd ounce combo pack for hair jigs, guys. Um, I can't emphasize it enough. We have been selling a ton of hair jigs at a really great price, man. Um, 116th, 132nd. This happens to be the 132nd all white so that's the combo i don't know if it's combo pack a or b but um 
I believe it's B, but they're all great and they're so inexpensive I've got on the website right now. And we're coming right through here. So here comes an aggressive one from the very bottom. Oh, did he get deterred? Why did he get deterred? Oh, here we go. We got this guy's attention again. Yeah, we're going to start from the back this time here. Doing what I like to call a stair step. Boom. Good fish here, guys. This should be a good fish. Yeah, he's a good fish. Man. We're going to keep a couple for pictures, and this is going to be a picture fish right there. That's a slab right there. Good fish. Now it looks like we got some fish coming in underneath us right now. See these guys right here? And so in that scenario, all I do is just drop it real quick. Now in terms of following, finding a school, all I do is I span it out to about 75 and boom, we got a big old school right here. Um, that's pretty easy to find once you know what part of the lake they're in or they're gonna be in. The secret of finding that is just basically wandering around until you run into them. Not every lake's gonna have this phenomenon, but it, um, now I took off that split shot just real quick because I'm curious if I really slow it down. Now this is really tough to, uh, oh yeah, he just placed it in his mouth. Yep, good fish guys, good fish. All right guys, there it is right there. Now, I am, so, as you guys know, if you're watching Three Pound Fishing, you know I love the Hammer 10. This is a 10-foot rod, mid-seat, AAA cork, incredible backbone, beautiful right here. Goes into a nice fade maroon, and you can purchase these on the website, threepoundfishing.com. There's also the Savage 13 if you're looking for a 13-footer. And the great thing about the Savage is that it can be transformed into a 15 or 16-foot. So it's like you're getting three rods for one. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to have some fun. And now the plastic I'm going to start off with is called the Ghost. It's a paddle tail on my website. The reason why I'm going with that is because, well, it's the color that's been working on the hair jig. So to me, it makes the most sense. It's basically a all white paddle tail with an orange head. The jig heads are also awesome. One thirty second. Boom. Probably our third cast. We've got good fish here. But I can tell you, I think they, they are intrigued by the action of the tail. This is a good fish. Solid eater. Solid eater fish. Um, I do feel like they are intrigued by the action. It seems like I'm pulling more fish up. So we might try some different plastics a little bit. I don't know. Okay, we caught one fish with that, but I've also casted quite a few times, and, and those, are, those are casts that you're not seeing. So, we're going to go ahead and take the ghost off real quick here. I think it's got a lot of action. I think it's actually bringing fish up to it, but we're going to put it to the side here, and we're going to try something different. Now. And that's the whole point. We're going to see what is working and what is not. So, one of my favorite all-time three-pound fishing baits is called the E-Frog. It's loud. They can't miss it. That's the whole point of it. Um, and that's the one we're gonna try right here. Now, this is not a paddle tail. This is just your minnow style, but it's called the E-Frog, so check it out. It's a great muddy water bait, but I feel like these guys aren't seeing it, so we're gonna change it up. All right, so that's that's our first fish with the e-frog and i ain't gonna lie to you guys it took a while it took a while so what you guys didn't see is that i casted a ton with the e-frog and i'd have fish come all the way up to it but they would not close the gap even me playing my tricks trying to play the the fish as best i could um 
I'm gonna go down, thumbs down right now for that bait. And a lot of times that bait is super hot, but I think it does need a little bit more muddy water conditions. So we've got the ghost, we've got the e-frog, and now we're gonna we're gonna try one more minnow style because that'll kind of ice it for me in regards to minnow style baits. We're gonna go with your traditional monkey milk minnow style. This is on three pound fishing as well. What I think that's gonna tell me is whether it's a color deal or if it's a vibration. Actually, I don't know if it tells you anything to be quite honest with you now that I think about it. It's the difference between plastic, hair jigs, a bunch of different factors, but it will tell us what has been more active today. And that's, that's the fun thing about crappie fishing is being able to walk through a bunch of different baits and seeing what is the most, uh, getting, getting it done the best, so to speak. We got a school of fish coming right underneath us. Dang it. Now check out that school. That is a beautiful looking school. take long to get a follower. Bam. First drop with the with the monkey milk. First drop with the monkey milk. <clears throat> and we got a fish. So I'm gonna say it's a right off the bat I'm gonna tell you it's a probably a color thing. Alright, that's frustrating. So what I'm gonna conclude is that Smaller's better. I'm going with the hair jig. Um, as of right now, I think that's the best play. Um, I certainly don't feel like I got any more bites with the minnow style or the or the paddle tail. Paddle tail had definitely more action. Um, so, but this is just kind of a walkthrough as to what I would do when I'm out in the water in terms of baits. This is kind of the progression I make through there. Uh, you know, the only other thing I might have tried was go back to that 1 16th uh, jig head. Uh, but honestly, the, you know, the, the smaller 1 32nd ounce hair jig was working really well at the beginning. And we just switched to see if it changed anything up. And we obviously saw that the, the hair jig was the best option. So there you go. When you're comparing a minnow, a paddle tail, and a hair jig, uh, that's kind of the progression I go through before... Uh, you know when you're trying to find what the bite is doing so there you go thanks guys appreciate you guys watching please subscribe have a great one